Are we ready to start, Nola? Yes, sure, we can start. Okay. Um, Honorable members, Minister Dillil, Deputy Minister Kivit, uh, Acting DG, uh, and the team, yeah, our parliamentary team, uh, Ms. Martinez, our committee secretary, Mr. Shoaib, our corner advisor, Ms. Inez, our researcher, and our support staff, um, uh, everyone who is here uh, to watch and listen to our portfolio committee today. Uh, good morning. Uh, our committee today will deal with um, the report, the issues that were raised as the committee in our oversight visit uh, report, the Bait Bridge and the, um, the, the Kosi Bay uh, border, borders. Um, there are things that we have raised there that we have lifted up that the, the, the department and the minister must deal with them. So today we're expecting those, those responses from from that, um, and it's also our last committee uh, this year, a year which has not been easy. Uh, we had to adapt to new normals, uh, the one of having meetings of this nature, uh, sitting in our homes or maybe in offices, but in front of the um, in front of the um, in front of the devices, uh, as we have to live this way, something that we're not used to. We had so many challenges. And what is worse, we lost family members, friends, colleagues, former colleagues through this COVID-19, which unfortunately has come back uh, with a very aggressive nature in Eastern Cape. People are dying. So please stay safe. Uh, do all that we did before when we were still in level five. I think we are supposed to be in level six now. It's so worse out there. Uh, you are all welcome, um, members in the meeting, uh, expecting robust debates as before, um, and also a very progressive responses from our department. Uh, Ms. Martinez, any uh, apologies that we have? Thank you, Chair. Good morning to yourself, the Honourable Members, the Honourable Minister, DM, and our colleagues from the Department as well as Parliament. There's one uh, apology, Honourable Chairperson, from Honourable Van Staden. I don't know of any other unless then I can be guided by perhaps the Honourable Mjobo, if she has any. Okay, I, I think, I think Honourable Mjobo just left the, the meeting, maybe due to network um, challenges, but she will be back. Uh, so far, I don't know any apology. Uh, I will then hand over to the minister. Good morning, honorable chair, honorable members. Um, chairperson, I will just, I won't introduce the, the full delegation, but we have got um, our acting DG here today with four other members from uh, DPWI. Then we also have town planning services. We have got a representative from our governance and anti-corruption unit. And we also have a representative from our Durban regional office. Um, I want to join honorable chairperson in your uh, call for, for staying safe. Um, our country really, in at least two provinces are in the upsurge. And it's very painful to see how many of our people are still dying. So it is up to us in leadership also to continue to, to mobilize people to stay within the, the protocols of the coronavirus. Um, we're also joined by our Deputy Minister Kivit this morning. And then uh, Chairperson, I just need to also say thank you for accepting my apology to leave at 9.30 uh, because of our last cabinet meeting and where we will be discussing also the hotspots in our country uh, today. Without further ado, Chairperson, I will give over to the acting DG uh, to start presenting the reports uh, to you. Thank you very much. 
Uh, thank you, uh, Minister. Before you hand over to to acting DG, I think we must formally welcome um, the delegation that you have, especially as there are people that are not coming straight from the department, that the usually people that we usually have. So they, they all welcome, as you have mentioned them, uh, the Deben Regional Office, the, mm. the Anti-Corruption Unit, um, uh, then the normal people like uh, that are from the department whether they are most welcome but can we also we extend our welcome to all those that are not coming from the national office uh, about town planning about IGR if they are within the department we, 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 we included them when we said the acting DG and the team um, thank you over to you minister I think. Thank you very much, uh, Minister and uh, Chairperson. Good morning, Chairperson and uh, Honourable Members of the Committee. Uh, Chairperson, uh, as you've mentioned, we're briefing on the recommendations pursuant to the site visits received from the Portfolio Committee on the 40-kilometre uh, emergency procurement and implementation of the border fence at Bait Bridge Border Post as well as the upgrade of the fence and patrol roads at the border between South Africa and Mozambique, uh, the Jersey Barrier Project. And moving on to slide three, Chairperson, um, we have uh, four sections to respond to uh, the recommendations made by the committee, as well as issues connected therewith. The four sections include the progress regarding the implementation on the, the Bay Bridge report, and then we move on to the broader perspective on securing the borderline um, between South Africa and its neighbors, the land border. Uh, and then we talk about the environmental clearance uh, compliance uh, certificates with respect to the Cozy Bay Jer Jersey Barrier Project. And we conclude then with the way forward in terms of how we'll be engaging the KZN Department of Transport in order to both regularize this particular program as well as support the Department of Transport at the KZN. So, Chairperson, the first presenter would be Mr. Diego Mufuking, or Advocate Diego Mufuking. He's a Director Anti-Corruption, and he will take us through the progress regarding recommendations uh, on the Bait Bridge Port Defense Project. Mr. Mufuking, over to you, and you can comment from slide five onward. Thank you so much. Good morning, Chairperson, Honorable Members, the Minister and DM, and Acting DG and colleagues. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Chairperson, for this opportunity. Uh, I'll be taking you through the recommendation that we have implemented so far. With mm -hmm. regard to the disciplinary judges, it was recommended that um, the senior official of our department must be charged. Uh, the process, how we, we dealt with it, is that um, it was referred to our legal services that then had to instruct the state attorney to, to draft the charges, appoint the initiator, and appoint the chairperson. The initiator and the chairperson were already appointed. Uh, and as a result thereof, um, the, 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 the notice of provincial charges were, were given to the implicated employees, uh, requesting them to make presentation as to why they must not be charged. All of the implicated officials, they have they have provided the, their responses, made the represent, representation that the department have then uh, considered, um, except one employee. Um, if the secretary can move to the next slide, please. Uh, except one employee who was just requesting a lot of irrelevant um, information, however, uh, the team was clear to that particular employee that uh, they will not be given further opportunities. Uh, it's given the last seven days to provide his representation, failing which the department then will, will, will continue. Um, this um, 13 employees that were recommended for disciplinary hearing, um, the 11 officials were, were, were appointed in terms of the section eight. And then we also have the two members of the department, which is a DG and the, and the minister special advisor that were uh, appointed in terms of a different dispens dispensation. As a result, they offer, uh, it was recommended that the disciplinary hearing be dealt separately. And then the, 
the one regarding the special uh, advisor was referred to, to the minister to process. Um, I believe uh, the minister has already uh, commenced the process, uh, commenced the proceedings there. The one of the DG, uh, because the DG has to be uh, disciplined through, through the president, um, the president at some point did delegate that function to the minister. Um, however, the DG has already been suspected with regard to the findings that were made by Pricewater Cooper's investigation regarding um, the state funerals and the PSA PSC investigation regarding a regular appointment. Uh, that is where now we where we are with the disciplinary hearings. I can also uh, conclude to say the with regard to the eleven officials, uh, the team has already made the recommendation to the acting DG to consider the the recommendation that they have, that, that they've made. Uh, what they are saying is that uh, they recommend that certain officials uh, be considered to be given a final warning and be subjected to to, to training, and then the other three officials be subjected to the full disciplinary proceedings. However, acting DG is still considering the matter and then still taking advice on the matter before he can make a final determination there. Secretary, can you please move to the next slide, please? With regard to the civil recommendation, uh, it was recommended that um, this matter be referred to the SIU because they, they, they have a, a COVID-19 related uh, proclamation. Uh, as a department, we did refer the matter to to the SIU to to recover the to to take the to take this matter before the tribunal. Uh, the matter was uh, was 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 filed with the tribunal on the 23 September 2020 to recover the, the the money that were paid to the service providers. However, um, after analysis of the the court papers, we discovered that uh, they were not properly filed. And as a result, it was agreed by the parties that the matter then will have to be withdrawn uh, from the tribunal and the SIU have to issue the fresh proceedings, uh, which they did. And then they filed on, the, on, on, on November this year, 2020, to set aside the contracts of MAQUA and, and Brock team. Thank you, Secretary, I can move to the next slide. With regard to the criminal charges, um, the department, again, we refer this matter to, to the SIU to register the criminal case or, on our behalf. Uh, however, the SIU, they don't refer the cases to SAPS. They refer the cases straight to the NPA. Uh, they did refer this matter to, to, to NPA. Uh, and then they also made the, they did make a follow up uh, and inform us that the NPA is still considering this matter. If the NPA decide to proceed, then the NPA then will refer the matter to SAP just to receive the case number, and then they'll proceed with, with, with this matter. Uh, the case was referred on the 18th of September, and then it's still under NPA consideration. The next slide, Secretary. It was also further recommended that uh, the department should consider uh, restricting the, the two service providers, and the matter was then um, registered with our restriction committee, on the 28th August 2020. Um, however, the, so, so, some, some of the members of the restriction committee were implicated in the report, and then they also requested that, um, that we provide them with the report, which we, we then resolved that we will not provide the report to them because some of the information in the report is not relevant to them. However, we'll provide only the section of the report that are uh, relevant to them which we did, and then the matter now uh, is ongoing. However, we also recommended that those that are implicated have to be excused from these proceedings. Next slide, Secretariat. We, we're also required to inform the Department of Environmental Affairs since the, the, since the borderline, or, um, borderline was constructed uh, in violation of environmental law. Um, however, the letter was prepared to be sent to Environmental Affairs, but we then we decided to hold it uh, because we're still waiting the, the approval for the broader borderline. Uh, however, we did manage to send the letter now on the 30th of November to them. Uh, then I think further consultation with them will, will take place. Then they'll advise in terms of the penalties and guide us uh, what need to happen. Thank you. Next slide, Secretariat. We also requested again to report the matter to the Council of the Building Environment, CBE, and Engineering, Engineering Council of South Africa. We did write to them um, at this council, and then they did inform us that they don't investigate the, 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 
they don't investigate the companies, they deal with the individuals. Then as a result of they recommended that we, re we refer the matter to CIDB, um, which we did. And then CIBD came back to us and also requested the investigation report. Um, however, the matter is still under ACTINDG consideration if we're going to release the, the investigation report. But I think, uh, but what we have resolved is that we'll again we'll release the part of the, the, the section of the report that applicable to the misconduct of the service providers. And we also return to them to request them if they can finalize the investigation by the 15th of December this year. Um, yes, thank you. Next slide, Secretary. There, there were also a number of uh, systematic recommendations that were made that the department should consider training um, the SEM officials. Uh, what the department have done recently is that the department concluded the memorandum of agreement with the School of Government. Uh, the School of Government will be pr providing targeted training to the department officials. Uh, we also have SEM reviewing some of its uh, internal processes and also conducting some of internal training. However, the broader picture is that the School of Government need to come in and assist in terms of targeted areas. Uh, and then the memorandum was signed recently and then the modules will be developed um, uh, later on. But because it's almost end of the year, I think uh, this process will commence next day where the, the, the training will commence. Um, and I think the other systematic uh, recommendation, then uh, this one I'll hand back, back to the acting DG uh, to hand over to the colleagues responsible. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, uh, Diego. Uh, Chairperson, through you, uh, this uh, next systemic recommendation, as well as sections B and C, I will hand over to the DDG, uh, a real estate investment management, Masasa Suban and her team. Thank you very much, Chairperson. Honorable Chairperson, Minister, Deputy Minister, uh, honorable members, colleagues. Um, in terms of the systematic recommendations, um, our recommendation is that any further border fence initiatives that has to be undertaken at a provincial level especially should be located within the context of the long-term, of the medium to long-term integrated border management uh, program that the department is, is currently running to align to the integrated nas national uh, strategy, uh, the, the, the master plan that is being developed um, together, uh, sorry, and aligning going forward with the border management authority that has just been constituted. They've got, they, they in development phase with their border, uh, with their master plan. So all of this alignment would have to be done. Um, the department has already implemented this recommendation um, in, 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 in terms of the, the town planning aspects of the master plan and the environmental um, considerations in around the master plan we've received our first set of approvals for about 100 kilometers, um, a, a section in uh, Mapungube, as well as in Madimbo. So this master plan for the integrated strategy, especially for the town planning aspects is already in place and um, has to be complied with. So in, in terms of also, um, the, the responsibility for, for DOD to patrol the borderline fences, um, that also has to, to be put in place. We've already had engagement um, with DOD uh, and it was reinforced by a ministerial interaction on the 4th of April, 2020, as well as a DG to DG letter on the 27th of April, uh, requesting DOD accordingly to intensify um, their patrol uh, in the area. And there's constant engagement also on official level in this regard. So in terms of the, uh, the, the defects that have to be rectified um, in around the, the fence that has been put through at Bay Bridge, uh, a technical condition assessment by DPW um, to inform the nature of the remedial work um, will be commissioned. Actually, the technical team was out there um, uh, yesterday and the day before, and they'll finalize their report by the 15th of December in this regard to determine if it's viable to undertake maintenance going forward 
on the, that fence. You could move to the next slide, thank you. So Chairperson, honorable members, if uh, we previously had a detailed presentation um, on the, uh, uh, the long term and the strategies and the plans for the, the long term integrated borderline fencing um, and the, the site clearance processes that is, is as part of the pre planning phase that is, is un underway. And just to reinforce, we're looking at the RSA Zimbabwe 700 kilometers, the RSA and Lesotho 600 kilometers, RSA Ishwatini and Mozambique uh, 54 kilometers and 500 kilometers uh, respectively. Now, um, uh, Nola, if you could just move to slide 19 so that we can look at the origins of the projects, please. And then we'll come back to slide 15. So in, in terms of uh, the pre-design um, and, and where it all started, in 2013, a task team was appointed by the presidency to deal with the borderline. DPW was appointed as the lead um, in this regard. And um, there's been various engagements with other government departments, including the Department of Defense, the Department of Agriculture. And in this regard, um, an instruction was issued to the DPW's town planning services that um, uh, chair and the portfolio committee members have been engaging with as well, to appoint consultants to conduct the site clearance process for the upgrading and construction of the patrol roads and fence between RSA and our neighboring countries. So consultants were appointed on the 25th of October, 2016, in line with the SEM processes to assist the department with the site clearance processes. And in giving effect to the implementation of, of these projects, the department uh, started uh, with the processes, uh, including um, the pre-planning process, which I'll come and discuss uh, shortly in, in detail. So um, in terms of best practice, the, 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 the DPW um, will constitute a technical team that will look at the, the best practice border fencing designs um, that is currently being conceptualized by the uh, appointed consultants for the discussion with DOD and National Treasury, importantly, National Treasury for funding. Nola, if we could move back then to slide 15, thank you. Thank you very much. So in terms of phase one, the pre-planning town planning phase, now this included uh, or includes site identification, securing of ownership. Some of the land is owned by, by private farmers, private individuals, et cetera. The establishment of appropriate land use rights, compliance with relevant legislation, including the removal, removal of encumbrances, restrictions that may restrict development or use um, of property. The, the site clearance um, processes required to meet legislative and environmental requirements. It requires um, uh, to, 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 for, for the department to undertake detailed site due diligence. We've got to determine land availability and suitability for construction. And that is also in terms of assessing the land, the gradients associated, and then the type of fencing that we actually put through um, to, to match the land configuration. Uh, accordingly. I've, I've touched on the acquisition of the privately owned land parcels and um, all of this then constitutes the existing process um, that, that town planning is, is undertaking and we have appended um, the progress in this regard that our, my team will touch on just now. So phase two, what does phase two entail? Phase two entails planning for the upgrade and redevelopment of the borderline fences. Now this will involve uh, design and specification development. It will involve costing of the specifications and designs. It will involve approval of the specification by Department of Defense, but we 
um, want to engage Department of Defense very early in the process. Um, one, that they, they are the user of the defense that we, we, we're going to be putting on. And secondly, um, that they support us uh, in, in terms of our funding requirements uh, uh, with National Treasury because the capital budgets have been devolved historically to the user department, in this instance, Department of Defense. So we'll have to work intrinsically with Department of Defense. We do realize that the requirement to um, install and construct the 700 kilometer fence is, is, is gonna require an extensive budget over 4.5 billion. We'll have to look at um, you know, um, some of the funding mechanisms that we can employ, including engagement with infrastructure South Africa, which has been initiated um, in terms of obtaining uh, project preparation funding and then developing possible funding modalities as we, we, we take this project to make it a strategic infrastructure project for the country as a whole. Um, and then phase three, once funding is, is, is made available, we have the approved uh, specifications, we can move on to constructing the fences going forward. I'm going to move to the next slide and I'm going to ask uh, my town planning team just to either uh, Budani or Malusi to take us through to the project program. Thank you, Chair, honorable members. Uh, uh, good morning, uh, it's Malusi Kaniso, Director, Down Planning Services. Uh, protocols are observed. Uh, we started this project um, in, um, in 2000 and uh, differently 2014 and 15. We have conducted quite a number of significant uh, investigation. We are left with only 80 to 90% to conclude. We were just been delayed by COVID-19 um, lockdown for six months. Hence, we have extended, this is a review program for the conclusion of the site clearance. Um, I have highlighted activities there. Uh, the activity from one to, to 13, they were very complicated. We have completed them. The one from 14 up to 19 is just an administrative and um, conclusion of services that are left behind. We have got the EIA approval for the, for the project. All of the project, we got the EIA approval because we have 80 to 90% um, conclusion of the site clearance. We have issued the provisional site clearance to go for planning and design for all uh, port of entries regarding to the border fencing. The, 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 the one that are uh, critically for, 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 for us to conclude now within the is Pluma, we need and we need to, to, to register a servitude whereby we have to go for the, for, the, for the expropriation. We have done everything, the expropriation, intent for expropriation is done. We're just waiting now for advertising the expropriation. Then we will conclude the whole site clearance by June next year, 2020. Next slide. Can I get next slide? The 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 compliance with uh, with NEMA. What we have done with the uh, uh, what we have done uh, uh, three months. Oh, the the first one we the first thing I want. applicant and uh, 
Oh. I think you're having problems, Malusi, with your connection. Yeah, you are no longer audible, Malusi. You need to you need to fix that, or we need to hand over to Kudani. Malusi, can you hear me? DDG, can we take a decision on this one? Kudani, can you come through, please? Okay, I think the both of them are having problems. Uh, let me come through. Um, so the National Department of Public Works um, is, is the main applicant and old holder of the environmental authorization um, for the planning and design um, for the maintenance and upgrade of the patrol roads and fencing across um, the border lines as indicated. Um, so during the site overview between DPW and KZN Department of Transport on the 23rd of September, a decision was taken that the DPW consultants and the KZN um, Department of Transport consultants will work together to develop the, bio, the biodiversity offset plan report and environmental plan uh, report to submit it jointly to the department of environmental um, affairs, fishery and forestry for compliance uh, and to obtain the environmental authorization, um, uh, authorization which had to be issued so as to support the KZN Cozy Bay Jersey Barrier project. Now also in terms of this um, chairperson, we, we would like to, to bring this project and integrate the planning requirements with our medium to long-term program um, and support um, our KZN colleagues uh, going through with all of uh, uh, the, the town planning requirements for this particular project. Thank you, um, Chairperson, um, honorable members. DG, I'll hand back to yourself, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, DDG. Um, I'll move over into Section G, uh, Chairperson, Section D, my apology, uh, with your permission. It's the consequence management and the progress, especially with regard to the memorandum of agreement with the Department of Transport at KZN. Now, just by way of background, Chairperson, uh, uh, we are all familiar with this in that the, the heightened criminal activity in the district municipality led to this particular program. Uh, which was initiated by the Office of the Premier to improve the border integrity between the, the RSA and Mozambique in the vicinity of Cozy Bay. And the KZN Department of Transport was in fact given the mandate to investigate solutions to this concern related to the illegal movement of vehicles in particular uh, at that particular point on the border. And uh, their engineers conducted a technical analysis of uh, possible infrastructure interventions and looked at a number of solutions that even included railway sleepers and the digging of trenches in that particular area before they settled on Jersey barriers. And that project then continued on uh, the understanding that they would fortify the borderline to serve that particular purpose, to prevent the illegal movement of vehicles and other physical matters uh, in the understanding that DPW will reimburse them. Um, for the cost incurred or part of the cost incurred as the national custodian of the of the border infrastructure. Now moving on to slide number 22. The on the 10th of July 2018, the DG of the provincial department uh, addressed a letter to, to our director general requesting funding to the tune of 50 million to reimburse uh, for this particular Jersey barrier project. Uh, shortly thereafter, uh, within a month, on the 10th of August, 2018, KZN then appointed a company to construct the Jersey barrier wall between the uh, district and uh, the Mozambique border in terms of uh, a phased approach. And this was phase one, and the contract value was 85.7 million rands. And then 
a whole year and a couple of months later, on the 20th of December 2019, the Department of Public Works then confirmed funding of 50 million uh, has been identified in our budgets and could be transferred to KZN under certain conditions. Now, then on the 9th to the 11th of October, of course, uh, most recently, the Portfolio Committee undertook a site visit to uh, the area and uh, prepared this report with its findings and recommendations. And one of the critical observations was a lack of a signed protocol or agreement to regulate the relationship between uh, our Department of Public Works and Infrastructure and the KZN Department of Transport for the construction of this border wall since this entire uh, border line construction and the border fence project at Cozy Bay is a national competence bestowed on the National Department of Public Works. So what has transpired here is that um, the department, um, we've now initiated the process. We've appointed an internal multidisciplinary task team that involves our intergovernmental relations, uh, coordinating this particular initiative to expedite the finalization of the memorandum of agreement. Uh, the team is comprised of our intergovernmental relations branches, the convener, our Durban regional office, the uh, regional manager, uh, Mr. Vilakazi, the head of legal there, Mr. Singh, as well as uh, Mr. Mbele, who's the head of construction in Durban, together our construction management branch, our real estate investment management branch, town planning, and the others, including legal services to constitute a memorandum of agreement uh, in as soon as possible time. And um, moving on to slide 23, uh, we've uh, confirmed assistance in the past of 50 million in terms of their request. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, it was done late in this in, in 2019, uh, more than a year after the request was made and, and well after the project had already commenced. And the commitment was made with certain conditions uh, in that the fence was supposed to meet the technical and regulatory requirements of a border fence assessed by the DPW to validate the work done, as well as the conclusion of a memorandum of agreement to regularize the relationship between the respective parties. Now, this uh, was referred to by my colleague Masuban earlier on, in that the technical team is, is already on the go to, to conduct this assessment, one. And second, the MOA is already done in draft. It is going through final review. And uh, we are in the cusp of engaging KZN in order to, 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 uh, to discuss the terms and the conditions and the requirements in order for us to work together and regularize this project. With respect to irregularities in TPW, no irregularities were identified in TPW. Uh, in fact, the, the, the one thing is, is not what we have done, is what we have not done. And uh, in terms of the MOU and coming to the party is, is where perhaps uh, the department ought to have been more proactive and um, in terms of its involvement to date. So going forward, uh, the issue has been the funding and the delay in concluding the MOU to enable the payment of the 50 million is where we act. And uh, in this regard, an official was uh, appointed to, to, to lead the project uh, when the KZN made a request for funding. And this official there was issued with a final written warning after I discovered the correspondence uh, that uh, led to his appointment as the lead person to conduct the MOA. And this was never initiated. So the person received a final written warning and the responsibility has been assigned to a new team. And as I've mentioned, the MOA has already been concluded and uh, we are now going to be engaging in consultations with our colleagues in KZN. So as the, the project comments before the conclusion of any MOA uh, and any confirmation of funding, uh, we, we have the the MOA, which stipulates certain conditions to avoid any irregular and fruitless expenditure. And there are certain provisions in the MOA that require that KZN ought to have followed proper procurement processes to appoint all the contractors and service providers on this project. That the structure is approved post facto by our user department, which is the Department of Defense, as an appropriate structure to help to mitigate border threats and is fit for purpose in this regard. And that also there must be a value for money assessment, which our team is also conducting to ensure the entire project uh, is uh, achieving these goals prior to any payments uh, being made. So, and moving forward from there, Chairperson on to slide number 24, the, uh, the uh, MOA is being finalized. 
We've also engaged with AgriMa in terms of the recommendations of the committee to look at alternative building systems in the in the vicinity of the border projects. And the first consultation took place between uh, the office of the DG, acting DG, and the CEO of AgriMa to explore alternative construction material to reduce costs and enhance efficiencies. And the outcomes will also be discussed with the Department of Defense it, as part of the process referred to earlier by my colleagues uh, as they are engaged in the DOD on the, the broader border fence project and the type of fences that would be appropriate for them to utilize to serve to mitigate border threats in terms of their mandate to protect the territorial integrity of the Republic. As a way forward, DBW will report back to Parliament after we have reached agreement with the KZN, Department of Transport, and our best to proceed to complete the rest of the border fence. I also want to reiterate that this phase one that uh, we were requested to support is eight kilometers long. And uh, by varying accounts, the distance covered so far is between 200 meters and one kilometer. So we need to talk about how this particular project will integrate into our broader border fence project at the borderline that was presented in the earlier slides. And what we want must do is assume full responsibility to provide for all infrastructure needs on all border lines and border posts as identified by the Department of Defense and other client departments. This is our duty to provide infrastructure to enable our, our user department, the Department of Defense, to mitigate border threats and to ensure it's able to carry out its mandate and constitutional duty to protect the territorial integrity of the country. Uh, all of this, of course, uh, is affected in, uh, by, by different dynamics, including the availability of budget and decisions taken in the broader context of government. But that's where we're at, all ready to embrace and to play our duty uh, in this particular project, Chairperson. And uh, with that background, we recommend that the committee notes our progress on the investigation and the implementation of the recommendations into the Bait Bridge Border Fence Project, as well as our role and continuing role with respect to the maintenance and upgrade of the fencing and patrol roads between South Africa and the Republic of Mozambique and the Jersey Barrier Project. Chairperson, I thank you. Thank you, uh, Minister um, DJ and, and, and the team. Um, I'm now inviting honorable members um, to comment on the, on, on, on the report that has been presented to us by the department. Um, honorable Siwisa, you are going to be number one. Honorable Graham Mare, number two. Honorable Hicklin, number three. Honorable Fanskalvik, number four. Honorable Shabalala, number five. Honorable Matebula, number six. Honorable Tring, number seven. According to the list that is in front of me, uh, of the hands that have been raised in the device. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thanks for the presentation. Uh, my question would go back to the time frames for the phases. There's no time frames attached because if there are no time frames attached, then this is going to be the longest process. We'll come back here and we'll be told a lot of stories because there's phase one that's, that doesn't have any attachments of date. Phase two, it goes like that. And then my other question would be, Chair, what is the role of the DOT KZN and national financial when it comes to the, the, the COSI Bay project that is happening financially? What is their role? How are they going to assist the Department of Public Works? And then, Chairperson, I, 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 my other problem is uh, through you, Chair, Minister, it seems as if there's a lack of monitoring in your department. We'll forever have officials that are going to be suspended. Right now, because of the, of the Bay Bridge, there's already 13 that are going to be, that have been charged. So are they still actively involved in the department 
or have they been suspended? It takes me back again when you go down, another official has been given a written warning because the MOA for some reason never saw the light of date. It seems as if there's a problem of monitoring within your department because we'll forever have officials that are not accountable. So it seems as if there's a serious lack of monitoring that needs to happen. People are not accountable. We'll forever be sitting here and being told about officials that didn't do this, officials that didn't do that. People are going to get written warnings and then that's going to be the end of the day. You go to slide 24, there's a, a progress and way forward, progress whereby Agrima SA is going to be involved. Why was Agrima SA not involved in the first place? Why is it being involved now? Whereas we know that we've got an entity that specializes in certain things, innovative ways of doing things. And then when there are projects, they are not going to be involved. Why are they being involved now? And then the department recommends that we must, the, an investigation conducted into the emergency procurement or the implementation of the 40, 40 kilometers borderline between RSA. What, what procurement and implementation of the 40, because already money has been spent and money has been spent and because of no proper follow-up was made we found, the department found itself with a fence that is, not, that is not fit for its purpose. And in the in-between, when you go back to the Bay Bridge, in between, there's a string of meetings that happened. But within the string of meetings, nothing was ever picked up that this is what's happening. And every time when something is not done, we are going to be told about COVID-19. Whenever there's something that was not done, we'll be told about COVID-19. It seems as if now COVID-19 has become, we are hiding behind COVID-19 about a lot of things. But when you go back to the Bay Bridge specifically, where we saw what happened, the dimensions were not proper, the fence that was put in was not proper. Now again, other money needs to be to be to be spent. You go back. You the NPA is still considering whether to move with the charges or whatever. And then not the proper papers were not filed. It's just a mess of no monitoring and evaluation, no accountability. We all know what happened at the Bay Bridge. And still there's a mess of papers not being filed properly. And now we have to wait for another turn for the proper papers to be, which means there's a possibility. There's not even a date attached as to when are the proper papers going to be filed. We'll come here next year and we'll be told another story. That's what happens with the Department of Public Works. Every time there's a new story that comes up, every time there's something, because Things are put there. There are no dates that are put there. And the next year we'll come back, we'll be told another story. We'll be told that something else was not there because when we go back to the Kosi Bay, we ask about the Kosi Bay, what's happening there. There was never a story about the MOA. And now today we are told that the paper was somewhere. It was never brought to our attention. The person was given a written warning. There's always, it seems as if, there's no proper, it, it doesn't seem, it is like that. There's no proper monitoring within your office because it seems as if documents get lost under people's noses and nobody knows what needs to happen. The, 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 the department itself is in chaos. Next year, we'll be told something else concerning the Kosi Bay, concerning the Bay Bridge. Some people will be found later on. Some people will be found later on. Every time there will be something else. One, there's no proper monitoring minister in your department. And it's over concern. It's, it's really over concern. Two, because of if people are given written on officials are under investigation. Are those if the, so here's my question. Why is Agrima SA being 
put into place now? Why was it not consulted in the first place? What are the time frames for those for those phases that you are talking about? And the officials that are under investigation or are being charged, are they still actively involved in the department or are they suspended and at home? And what made you to actually make a decision that and an MOA that caused a lot of havoc and then a person is given a return on it and that person is not being charged or being, or being suspended. So those are just my questions for now, uh, uh, Chairperson. Maybe I'll make a follow up after the response. Thank you. Chair, sure, I'll continue. Um, good morning, everybody. Thank you very much for the presentation and um, thank you for the progress that has been made. Um, I think it's marvelous that that despite where we're at with re respect to these two projects, um, they have triggered some changes within the department and some um, real consequence management. Um, I just have a couple of, of questions and points to make. First of all, um, you refer to the fact that the matter went to the SIU tribunal. Um, I just want to make sure that it is still going to be properly investigated by the SIU, because what we have is a preliminary report that was um, um, requested by the department itself from the SIU, but now the matter was supposed to have been referred to the SIU under the COVID-19 um, investigations. So I just want to, to confirm that that is still going ahead and that we are still awaiting feedback with respect to that um, under that presidential proclamation. Um, the restriction committee and authority, where does that reside? In which department? Is it within our department and it, you know, it, it does its own internal investigations or does it fall within a different department? I don't know. I've never heard of this, this committee before um, or this, um, yeah, this committee. So if you could just please t um, um, just clarify where it resides, to whom it reports, um, what are its terms of reference and what are its powers um, with respect to the findings that it, that it, that it will make. Um, I think one of the things that has happened here, um, and I think it's a big problem, this department is not a service delivery department. This is an enabling department and it works on instruction from either the executive authority or from other departments. And I think one of the things that, is, that has become very clear through this, these two um, issues is the impact of external pressure on this department. So in the first, first um, problem we have here is that everything around the Bikebridge border fence happened as a result of a ministerial directive. In other words, the executive authority created this problem. That was then on the basis of a presidential proclamation around COVID. Um, it created the sense of urgency. The minister responded to the sense of urgency. And as a result of that, um, all of these issues arose. It's the same with the Jersey barrier. There's the sense of urgency. There's this criminal activity in the area. Um, and suddenly everybody decides that something has to be done. Um, and there's pressure on this department to perform in order to meet the requirements of other departments. So. Of all the departments in this government, this one requires a fully functional, properly um, functional and effective IGR, because this is the one department that needs to have proper relations with, with its client departments and with the executive authority. So I'm hoping that as a result of what has happened here, the IGR functionality of this department is going to be strengthened, and also that um, things will be put in place to make sure that a lack of planning on everybody else's behalf does not constitute an emergency within this department, because I think that's what's happened on a number of occasions. Even throughout the COVID crisis with the appointment of, of EPWP, so much of that was, was sort of emergency procurement done because it was required by other departments. So um, hopefully something will be done to address that um, going forward. Um, one of my colleagues, um, the Shadow Minister of Defence, has just done a full assessment of the various border, border posts, bo border lines, etc., um, around what we're, we're talking about. He's just gone and done an oversight visit. Um, I have to tell you that that fence at Bartbridge, there are sections where that entire fence is completely decimated. It has been all but 
removed completely. The photographs are actually horrendous. It's about 10 times worse than when we were there. So um, my question then is, is it even worth our while to be spending money on maintenance on something that is so completely substandard um, that it's never, ever going to meet the requirements of, of the border fence? Um, and maybe we're going to have to look at something else going forward, rather spend more money to put something better there than to continually spend money maintaining something that's never, ever going to be um, sufficient. Um, I also read recently that there were issues around the, the cement or the concrete that was used in the posts. Apparently, it wasn't properly tested um, and it didn't meet those specifications. Um, can we also just get clarity on that? And then, and then my last question um, is, with respect to the funding of the borders, this is not just our problem. Um, what, what is being done with respect to engaging the countries with whom we share the borders um, around, and I think I've asked this before, but I think, I think it needs to be emphasized. Those countries, Eswatini, Mozambique, um, Zimbabwe, Lesotho, need to come to the party on this, because at the end of the day, it's their breaches. We don't have South Africans rushing over the border to their, their side. They're coming into our side and they need to also come to the party. So I do believe that some pressure needs to be put maybe on the president um, as the chair of SADC to start engaging with those countries that they need to also make some contribution to this. It cannot just be the responsibility of South Africa to carry the cost of the borders. Um, I think that's, uh, just finally, um, Again, the Jersey Barrier Project is an excellent, I mean, it was really an eye-opening example of how things can be done um, if they're done for the right reasons and they're done in a manner that, that empowers. Um, the local empowerment on that project has been really fantastic and I think it is something that needs to, to be emulated um, in other areas where they really have tried to um, upskill local people. They've tried to use only local SMMEs um, the, the Jersey barriers themselves, is, it's a fantastic concept. Um, unfortunately, the, the cost becomes a, a huge factor, particularly as it only addresses one issue, which is around the vehicular crossings, and it doesn't address the crossings of people. Um, but it is an example of, of how we can use innovation. Um, and, and I do believe that, that we should, as a, as a department, highlight the, the efficacy of, of what they're doing there and, and what a fantastic concept it is. Um, but we need to again address the shortfall with respect to, to supply chain management and how the process was, was, um, was done. So, you know, I don't think we must be um, throwing out the whole concept of the Jersey barriers and the Cozy Bay border because I do believe it is a wonderful example of what can be achieved. Um, but we do need to, to look at ways um, of mitigating against ongoing supply chain issues, procurement issues, um, and lack of procedural um, compliance. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chair. I will pick up straight after my colleague, Samantha. Um, in, in many ways, uh, I have been covered. Uh, I, I differ to an extent with one comment that uh, Honorable Graham mentioned, and that was that everything was done um, as an emergency, it was done as, em as an emergency. My problem with the whole concept of what is happening right now in terms of the lack of data with regards to deadlines as to when things are going to happen is that I am, the feeling I am getting is that there is no emergency. And the sad state of affairs is that our borders are incredibly porous. That is an emergency for me. We have to step up to the plate right now to address the porous border issue. We cannot have committees discussing with committees discussing with committees to make sure that things are done. We have had a solid year almost of emergency situations having to deal with things. We need to understand what the processes are. We need to be able to put these into place now to make sure that things can be done now, not flaunting or, or, or breaking the supply chain or emergency regulations that we land up with fruitless and wasteful expenditure as we have seen with Bait Bridge and, uh, and the likes. But the problem that we have to do is we can't have this 
as an indefinite project. We have to address the issue right now. Our borders are as porous as a sieve. And we need to make sure that people are able to, please excuse me, that people are able to um, address the issues of the borders as we have them in South Africa. Um, where people are immediately able to come across our borders, we have to secure our borders. And it is the, the collaboration between the Department of Defense, the Department of Transport, and the Department of Public Works that would enable such an issue to, to, to be resolved. I want to just make one comment um, regarding the investigation into the special advisor. The minister is the person who appointed the special advisor. And yet in terms of the recommendations, she is the person who is going to be investigating the appointment of the special advisor, if I heard correctly. How can one be charged in inverted commas with an irregular appointment and then be the one who's going to be arbiter of whether the appointment was irregular or not? That's just one thing that worries me ever so much. Thank you so much, Chair. I will leave it there. And again, apologies for my dogs. I asked them not to bark, but they didn't listen. I'll proceed, Chair. Good morning, everyone. And uh, thank you for the presentation, the update that we've received with regards to the recommendations that we've made. I think, Chairperson, uh, many of my uh, concerns have been raised by the previous members, so I'm not going to venture into that. Safe to say, Chair, that in terms of this, uh, Josie, Barry, and Cozy Bay, uh, on slide 22, it's been indicated there's been a 50 million rand requested, and the actual uh, uh, contract value is more than 85 million rand. So I will, I, I'm just worried about the shortfall, the difference between those two amounts. Who's going to cover that difference, seeing that this is a national competency? Can we have a clear indication in terms of that? Then, uh, Chairperson, in terms of the MOA, it's been uh, reported that there's been a lead person that has been uh, appointed specifically for that. Uh, that uh, purpose but i'm uh, now the person got a final written warning in terms of disciplinary actions but my concern is chairperson we've seen over the course of this more than a, a year that we've been in this uh, portfolio committee that there's a lot of uh, uh, punitive steps that has been taken there's a lot of 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 uh, disciplinary uh, procedures or consequence management that has been proposed. But nowhere we find that there's proper supervision. Because when, when we look at such a long time, the acting DJ indicated that he only uh, found late that the person didn't uh, uh, do what uh, he was supposed to do, he or she was supposed to do. So my, my uh, concern is we are not proactive in terms of, 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 of making sure that everyone who's being appointed is doing what is appointed for and being continuously made aware that uh, reports are being given in terms of the mandate that the uh, people have if they are really doing what they are supposed to do, then we end up having very costly post-mortems after projects, and that can't be business as usual. So if we can have uh, at our next engagement uh, proper measures that, that, that the department is instituting in terms of making sure that people are doing what they are supposed to do. Then, Chairperson, I see that phase one is covering eight kilometers at a cost of 50 million rand. And now we've been told that not only one kilometer has been completed. 
can we have an indication of how much money was spent uh, on the, the, the completed uh, phase and what is the, the projected cost of the whole uh, project? Because I'm, I'm just worried, uh, Chairperson, that seeing the, the, the figures, we might end up with a bigger disaster than the Bay Bridge disaster. If we look at the, the funds that has been spent already or the projected funds uh, versus the money that has been spent. Then Chairperson, in terms of the, I'm, I'm, I'm echoing the sentiments in terms of the, the this uh, committee, the restriction committee, can we have an indication of, is it an uh, internal committee who's supervising and who's monitoring it? And by when will they do their final determination? Because we need to have timelines in terms of that also. We can't sit there, uh, there at the end of, of, of the financial year next year, and then we discuss it's in process, in process. We need to know also in terms of the MOA, when it will be finalized. We need some timeline so that we can uh, request uh, feedback or proper updates during our next engagements in terms of the quarterly reports there so that we, we, we can properly monitor that. Then, Chair, in terms of on slide 15, we see uh, the planning in, uh, for the upgrade and redevelopment of uh, borderline fences. There's a process that's been outlined. Can you please engage the Department of Defense from the planning phase instead of waiting for them until the final approval stage so that they can go step by step in terms of this process so that they can indicate where the fault lines are and what needs to be done to make sure that there's proper approval. Uh, Chair, I think, let, let me pause there for now. Thank you very much. Uh, it's comrade, uh, Ma. Okay, comrade, I don't see, I, I no longer see comrade Matebola. Honorable Matebola, apologies. Honorable Shabalala. Thank you, Chairperson. Um, thank you, Chairperson, for the opportunity. And I really wish to, to, to appreciate and, and thank the presentation, especially on, 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 on the fact that the response on the recommendation is very prompt. It's unlike when we have to wait uh, forever. Uh, Chairperson, I want to say something about this issue of borders. I know that uh, I want to, to re-emphasize the fact that it, it goes further to say uh, South Africa is a long way. And with the, 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 the presidents uh, in, the, in, the, in the leadership to make sure that uh, Africa uh, state of, of peace and stability is, is maintained. Oh is always on the agenda because Africa, we, we are part of Africa anyway. Uh, just ignore that we are South. I don't know where the South comes from, but it's okay. But without the stability and peace in Africa, we will always have the issue of borders. So that's what I wanted just to, to highlight. But I just want to check uh, where is this model come from? Which country is the model that we took when we look into the border fencing? Um, uh, it will be very interesting because one will be able even to follow up and even do the research Chair, around I, what... Uh, uh, what's up, Chair, to say how Chair must... Sorry. Oh, can I can I continue, Chairperson? Please continue, Honorable Shabalala. 
Okay, all right. And then, uh, uh, Chairperson, I want to align myself with what the, the other members have said. Safe to say that I just want to, to check, where is the Department of Defense in this strategy? Because I would, I would understand if the strategy on, on, the, on the border, uh, fencing and border security is done jointly so that we don't find the Minister of Public Works saying something and then the Minister of Defense saying something. For instance, the Minister of Defense spoke about the drones and I don't know where we, we, we fit as the Department of, of Public Works. Safe to say that, uh, Chairperson, I was wondering to myself, really, is it about the infrastructure or is it about the human capital? Most of that will count. Um, having uh, experienced what has just happened with the um, uh, escape of um, Prophet uh, Bushiri, uh, that left me with some questions as to whether you can put the fence but the, 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 or the, the wall, but the person can still go through and leave the country just like that. Uh, that, that was one of the things. But Jefferson, the, the issue of the amount that has been paid uh, by the department, I'm just wondering, uh, how much are we looking at? Uh, do we have the bill of quantities that we're going to see or that will be included in the MOA? Because you need to put figures as to how much that we're looking at so that we don't get surprised. Our term will end, then the next um, portfolio committee and the ministry or the, the next people to lead the department will be given some new figures that will be piling up forever. Can we have the indication of the bill of quantities that will be done between the defense force and the um, agreed to by the KZN, KZN DOT? Safe to say that, Chairperson, I want to align myself and I, I want to reassure members that the issue of KZN has long been a, a disaster in terms of the, the, the border fencing uh, that uh, separate us from Mozambique. I remember at one stage, we had a, an event with, the, with the, the speaker that was in Kanyagute. And on our way, we were supposed to be joined by one of the van that carried the food parcels for, for the speaker. And that van was hijacked as it passed uh, Mbangin. All of us said we know that this van might be taking the route to Mozambique. And we know that the, 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 the motor trading there is being taken from South Africa, especially the government cars. I know some departments, maybe they did not finish us with the total number of how many cars have been taken let alone the ones that belongs to the private owners, but from the departments, those are the cars that they've been uh, uh, targeting. I think that we'll see the light of the MOA uh, that is going to be uh, done in the terms of reference that has got the figures. Um, uh, but safe to say that, Chairperson, we, I think the Mozambique one needs also to be uh, closely monitored even by the, the defense. Because right now, I know that there is much of instability that can affect South Africa in a, in a big way, more especially uh, the areas next to the border because they are insurgents and people are dying as we speak uh, in, in, in Mozambique. For now, Chairperson, some of the issues have been raised and some more especially the legal issues that pertains to people that have been uh, doing wrong things, but they are given the responsibility. But I don't even see the trend or the trace or the cycle of how the border, uh, the, 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 the border 
between us and, and Zimbabwe, I don't see the trace in, in this, the whole thing of people that need to, to be uh, responsible and be held responsible from the legal side of it, from the constitutional side of it. Please uh, give us all this, um, the information. Thank you, Chairperson. Tabula is back. Uh, Honorable Matabula, over to you. Uh, thank you very much, Chairperson, uh, and thank you uh, for allowing for allowing me to speak, Chair. Uh, Chair, I just want to raise some few issues. One, uh, it is reported here by the department that uh, uh, there are suspensions of uh, staff members. Now, what I want to check, Chair, uh, is whether or not the suspensions of uh, staff members has affected the performance of the department. Uh, because in my view, Chair, is that uh, these staff members, they were doing some work for the department and now they are no longer doing it. And they obviously have to source people from somewhere, whether as deputies or they have to get people who will act in their positions. Now, uh, you might obviously not get the same quality as you used to, to get with the person who was there before. Now, hence I ask the question, has this suspension of um, a staff members affected the performance of the department? If it has, how has it uh, affected the performance of the department? Uh, secondly, Chair, um, well, the officials that are being or that have been suspended uh, it is said that they, they were actually allowed, of which it is by law, to make a presentation in terms of uh, the uh, cases that they are facing, uh, in terms of disciplinary actions that are instituted against them. But uh, uh, it is said or reported here Chair, that uh, some of them uh, have indicated that they would prefer uh, warnings and also a uh, training. My, my take here is that uh, each and every department uh, or each and every company, it is a standard thing that uh, its staff uh, does get training from time to time. Now the question I'm asking, what type of a training are they looking for? And why should they ask for training when they have committed an act of crime? In my view, Chair, that should not be allowed. And another thing that I might maybe want to know about it is the extent at which they contributed uh, to the corrupt acts, acts that uh, uh, took place. Um, uh, in the in the issues of corruption that they are actually alleged of. Uh, if they ask, for instance, say, was to was them just being many uh, messengers that to give them this uh, bunch of papers and then they have to give it to someone else, then I would say. But if they attach signatures, they have to assess read documents. That it will be sending a wrong message. Uh, to the public in dealing with corruption. And another thing that we are dealing with here, we are not dealing with the uh, 500 rand uh, that was lost or 500 rand that was uh, involved uh, in corruption. We are talking about millions of offerings. Now, given the fact that corruption in South Africa is also in the, uh, on the rise, it would not be correct that you, you, you give such people a warning. And I want to further say, Che, I think this is a good thing in any way as the nation, if we want to end corruption, we need to go to war with this corruption. We must be able to identify it, we must report it, and then uh, we must investigate them. And those who are found to be corrupt, they must be punished uh, in a way that 
there would be a corrupt people would not even further think of a, you know a committing acts of corruption. We know, for instance, in some other countries, uh, such as such as China, uh, for an example, if you corrupt, corrupt corruption, your your punishment will be a death sentence. Uh, now, if in South Africa you are found to be corrupt, you must really be severely be, uh, you know, um, uh, punished, because in my view that is treasonous. Che you know, stealing from, from the poor. So these uh, uh, staff members, they must go face the music, they must explain themselves, and then, but then if they are found guilty and to the extent that they have committed so much of uh, corruption in the project, uh, I think a harsh sentence or harsh punishment must be meted out to them. Well, Che, another thing that I just want to also check in relation to the very same project, the Bay Bridge project, we know that uh, projects like this, they obviously have must have gone to treasure. Now, but you are not hearing, I know that is not a uh, part of the department or the section that we have in, in, in our department. It's another section in, in government, of course. But now, Che, but we are not told because as to what has happened uh, to those that gave a stamp of approval for, for this uh, project, which was not fit for a purpose. Now, can we be benefited that, is there anyone in Treasure who acted in concert with the suspended staff members for this project to uh, you know, to, to take place. Because like I said, Chair, my view is that uh, in, in one way or another, there must have been some link for this particular act of corruption that has taken place between those who are in department, in, the, in our department and those who, who are in treasure. Uh, lastly, Chair, well, in terms of the, the borders, that we have, uh, one has taken a scan or a look. It might be a Bay Bridge border, which is between us and Zimbabwe. Um, the, the bridge that uh, the border uh, that we have between ourselves and, uh, and Mozambique. Uh, surely you can see that uh, all of these countries, the two countries, uh, I'm sure in Lesotho and Switzerland is the same thing. Uh, there's nothing that borders them to secure these borders. Uh, as we speak today uh, in South Africa, you have uh, about 15 million undocumented immigrants that are in South Africa. And this is very much, uh, th this is very, uh, this is too much, uh, Che. Uh, for the country like South Africa, uh, which is a developing country economically, to have such people who are undocumented, uh, who are in South Africa. Now, you then ask yourself a question as to how did these people leave their countries into South Africa? Of course, uh, as it has been said that uh, and uh, in actual fact, even uh, the issue of Bushir, that we have not also been manning enough or securing our, our borders in a way that would stop these people from coming in here. But equally, uh, you've got the other countries which have got the responsibility to ensure that they secure uh, their borders so that there are no people who are undocumented who come from their country into South Africa. Now, seeing what we have seen in these borders, it clearly shows that these countries do not border. Now, I, I just want to ask the minister if she is able to interact with her counterpart in these other countries in terms of the international relations that we have, because 
if we all act in concert to secure our borders, I'm sure that the 50 million of immigrants that are illegal, which are in South Africa, should have been minimized. Thank you very much, Chair. Oh, Honorable Trink, I think you are the last one, if he's still um, in the meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Uh, yes, I'm still in the meeting. Um, Chair, I want to agree firstly with um, Honorable Suisa uh, that we, we must attach timeframes to, to our projects uh, because if we do not attach these timeframes to, to our projects, the can just gets kicked down the road and in our seventh and maybe even uh, eighth administration, we will still be talking about these projects and phases that, uh, that need to be implemented. Uh, but that being said, we, we have heard ad nauseum how our entities uh, struggle to recover expenses from uh, client departments. Um, with the Department of Defense being one of those client departments in the construction of the seven kilometer, 700 kilometer border fence, uh, which, is, which is worth billions of rands. How are we going to ensure and what processes are going to be put, be, be put in place to ensure that the Department of Defense does not become one of those errant client departments. So I think some of our some of my colleagues have also touched on uh, touched on this, but perhaps in a in another way. Uh, I think sec secondly, we we all know of the irregularities at the uh, Bait Bridge border post. Uh, at that at Bait Bridge, was some one million rand per kilometer for a fence. Uh, some called a washing line, uh, a fence that could just be pushed over. Um, I was able to break a piece of that fence with my small piece with my fingers um, and many breaches were found. But we, we, we looked at 1 million per kilometer and there's a huge, uh, uh, huge uproar over the irregularities found at, at Bait Bridge. And so should they be. Now, <clears throat> at Cozy Bay, uh, despite the the illegal trafficking of vehicles. And, and yes, we, we all agree that uh, something needed to be done. But despite that, we have an irregular process uh, that was undertaken with the erection of the, uh, the Jersey uh, barrier walls. Um, the irregular process included no memorandum of understanding uh, that, was, that was, or M MOA. Memorandum of Agreement, no EIA, there was no environmental impact assessment that had been properly conducted. Uh, and then we've also found that there was a usurping of the mandate by the Department of Public Works and Infrastructure, where the KZN Department of Transport uh, was undertaking Public Works's mandate. Now, <clears throat> the cost per kilometer at Cozy Bay works out to some 10 million per kilometer, as opposed to the 1 million per, per kilometer at, at Bait Bridge. Yeah, we've got irregular expenditure, an irregular process of 10 million per kilometer for an eight kilometer Jersey barrier wall. When we were present, a large portion of that 80 odd million for the eight kilometer uh, barrier wall had already been expended, but only about 100 to 200 meters of the wall was in place with, with more than 60, 70% of the pro projected cost already being expended. Now, the ACDP called for an external investigation, but we were convinced to rather follow an internal investigation. When we were at the conducting our oversight visit, there were some senior officials present who indicated that the same mistakes that were made at Bait Bridge were made at Cozy Bay. But now in the report, we're hearing that only one official was fingered out and this one official was given a final written warning. Yet we have costs which are more than 10 times per kilometer irregularities similar to Bait Bridge, 
but it does not seem as if we are following the same course as we did with Bra- at Bait Bridge as, as in, as in uh, Cozy Bay. Now, this, this committee took a decision to undertake an internal investigation process, as I said, rather than an external one, which the ACDP called for. Besides this one official being given a written warning, how far is this is our internal process? Um, and when are we going to be given a detailed report of all of the irregularities and the consequences that will follow as a result of these irregularities? Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, uh, thank you, uh, Honorable Tring, and thank you, Honorable Members. Uh, let me state up front, we won't have a second round for the questions and comments uh, as we are expected to be out of this meeting by Cora to the 10 to allow the process of us uh, logging in in the parliamentary sitting that is starting at, 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 at 10. Uh, so we are in a bit of a tight corner in terms of time. And as such, uh, in my comments, I would also um, talk on the <laughs> on what I would be rounding up, uh, Minister, so that if if the time is against us, we 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 don't have, we are not found one day. One minister, um, um, uh, I may I may have, or maybe don't understand exactly, but when I was reading this report, um and looking at all that we have discussed before and even in the presentations of today. You may correct me. I don't see anyone being suspended for now. I see disciplinary actions taking place. Uh, so it means the disciplinary actions that are taking place. In fact, it's only one person who is a suspended, um, uh, which is um, the DG, and, and I will come even on that one. Um, it's the disciplinary actions that are taking place and uh, we are told uh, the processes that are being followed, the processes that have been followed so far. But, but to me, I don't see any, any word or any sentence that says, then they are out of work and we are doing this while they are maybe on precautionary suspension, something like that. I, I don't see that in, in, in the report, maybe it has, it has skipped me. Uh, but I, I support what the members have said uh, on the issue of the time, the time frames. We need to have time frames to sort that out anything that is happening within the department. The, the, the reality, I'm raising this uh, minister and the team. For example, in Northwest, we have, a, um, is it an HOD? HOD of Public Works, who was suspended pending investigation in 2018. That person is still sitting at home. That person is still paid money by public works, but is not doing any 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 work. So the reason we are saying there must be time frames in this, we don't want that situation. Uh, rather than keeping someone at home for more than two years, we'd rather bring that person back to do the work. And in terms of maybe that person can follow that up, that person can even win the case. Uh, that's why I, get, I was saying that I'm going to come even on the issue of the DJ. The DJ has been suspended now. I think it's over three months. I don't know whether uh, any charges have been labeled against him. And, and if DJ takes the department to court and saying that I've been in suspension and these are happening, how are we going to deal with that? And then you then be asked, bring this person back because even the law allows that. So we, we, must, we must look at these things. That's why we are saying as the committee, timeframes must be set out. Two, um, Minister, I think you have seen us as this committee, we are very consistent. The issue of the border, we're going to follow it up. We're going to follow this up. As, as, as this committee, much as we're going to follow all other issues, but the issue of the borders, we're going to follow up. I, I, we have seen uh, the Bait Bridge, we have seen the, the Kosi Bay, and we have seen what we are presented here by the, the, the town planner. Uh, on, on a project, 
that started in 2016. And now it's the end of 2020. They have not yet finished even the first phase. We can't allow that to happen. It means no services will be rendered. If a project, the first phase of it, will we'll, 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 we'll have to take like more than five years. Why? We, we, no, we're going to follow this up. Uh, it, it, it shows that there is a serious lack of a, a commitment in, in, in the officials of the department. There is a serious lack of commitment on whatever that they are doing with the, with the department. Um, but we appreciate uh, the prompt response when we asked for you, uh, Minister, to, to take us into about how far you have gone. And the, 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 also the, um, we can also say that there is also a commitment to, to, to do a consequence management and fix the, the problems that arose with these projects. But then coming closer to also our recommendation, uh, Minister, the issue of the MOU, I, it's MOA, it, it has to be signed with immediate effect. That one, the, bring in your legal people to look at that, but it has to be signed with immediate effect. If there are issues that you feel that they may not have been included, you must speak with the Department of Transport of KZN, but that issue has to be sorted out. We can't continue because Department of Transport in KZN did your work. The issue of the, 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 the fencing of the borders is the responsibility of public works, not, not any other department. It is their responsibility. So you need to, to sort that out uh, and, and bring in your legal people and your, your finance people to check whether uh, are we not going the, the route of the paid bridge. But on the issue of the paid bridge, Minister, now I am seriously worried on the fact that uh, even if you look at the news and all that, yes, I've seen some news that are coming on, but we ask that that company, Magua, be blacklisted. That thing has not happened. We have seen in the news other companies that have done shoddy works in other provinces where you will find out that the, the um, the, the company's bank accounts are frozen, assets are taken from cars, houses from those companies, but nothing is happening with this company. And, and, and we have checked how this company has done work with public works. There are many questions, there are many red flags too. And the number of years, and the number of years, we know that this company has been working with public works for more than 50 years. For more than 50 years, this company has been working with public work for more than 50 years. And, and, and then it does this work. It shows that even before, previously, there are many short works that this company has done. If we can go that route and check how many works it has done and it has done properly, you'll find out that there is a lot of things that it has done wrongly before, but all that thing has been covered, put under the carpet. But this time, we, we, we had to find it out. And there's nothing that is being done to this company. I am not happy about that, but I know it may not be your duty, the SIU and all the, 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 the law enforcers have to take that route. But I'm not happy that even today, we are talking about Magua who claimly go to the media and say that they are going to pay the amount. It's not about paying the amount. It's about doing what is wrong. And as such, they have to be charged for that. As it has happened in the Saudi, whatever, the asbestos, what, and they, they are come, their bank accounts must be frozen. Their assets must be reposed by the, the government so that we see something which is consistent across the country not uh, being done because we will go there if we have to go there that because that company is owned by a black man that thing has to happen because that company is owned by a white man that thing cannot happen to them it can't be like that in the 26 years of our democracy thank you minister uh, over to you and your team 
thank you, Honorable Chairperson and members. I'll also just uh, do a short summary of my responses, and then the department can also just also summarize their responses. Chairperson, I want to uh, first address the point, and I agree with the chairperson, Honorable Sawisa, Honorable Yeeklin, and Honorable Thring the, uh, about the time frames. Because this project or this decision was taken in 2013. The consultants were only appointed in 2016. So there is a lack of urgency. We're now in 2020 and we are still busy with the pre-planning phase. So I want to agree with you that this time frame is not acceptable. I've raised it with the department. I've also said to the department that we need to do some of these processes concurrently, not one process and then you start the next one. And where I also agree with honorable members is that the involvement of the Department of Defense right from the beginning. I've gone as far as asking the, the department to go out for a request of information so that we can test the market, so that we can see what type of technologies are available in the market. So by the time we make a presentation to the Department of Defense, we can present different options to the Department of Defense, but we need to test the market and see what is available in, in, in South Africa. Um, then Honorable Yeeklin, uh, on the special advisor, Honorable Yeeklin, it is on slide six, you will see that the Office of the State Attorney is driving the disciplinary process and not the ministry, it is there. And then if I can come back to Honorable uh, uh, Suwisa about uh, the lack of monitoring. Now, I have several times said before in the past, and I don't wanna go back there, but the department is in a mess. But we need to look at why is this department in a mess? It is because more than 12 of the senior managers in this part department has been appointed irregular without the necessary qualifications. This court case is before the labor court in Bramfontein since May 2019 and up till today, we have not received a date from um, the, 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 the labor court. The monitoring takes place at different levels. There is the National Department of Monitoring and Evaluation that's based in the presidency. From the ministry side, we have a monthly meeting with all the MINTOP members. I have a weekly meeting with the DG and the CFO and for the past 18 months, we have introduced some systems like contact management, consequence management, due diligence. So it's all work in progress to mitigate the impact of the lack of qualifications with, 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 within the department. Then just, I will agree also with Honorable Graham um, about the DPWI as a service department. An honorable chairperson yourself also have raised it in the past that until such time we've got this public works bill before parliament and stop talking about four white papers, three white papers that we've done already. We will continue to have a department that's not regulated in terms of any act of parliament. And again, I want to impose on the department and myself that we need to speed up the, the public works bill. Just in terms of the borders, South Africa is only responsible for our side of the border. Then the neighboring countries must build their own border. And then you've got a piece of land that you call no man's land in between. But I also agree that we do have to engage with um, with our neighboring countries at the AU level and also at, 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 at SADC level. Just chairperson on the, um, in the Cozy Bay. Yes, I can agree. I can see another Bay Bridge coming here because this process was started, started in 2018. Already it was planned for eight kilometers. We've only completed 200 meters of the eight kilometers 
And again, already you can see there's a funding problem. So it's clearly uh, uh, an, uh, another, another Bay Bridge. Um, Honorable Matabula, on the issue of corruption, I can't agree more with you. But also what we also have to observe is that we have to act within the framework of the Labor Relations Act. Uh, people who are alleged to be involved in corruption, they also have rights. Uh, all, although this, this takes very, very long in some cases, I also uh, uh, agree with you. Now, a chairperson, on the points that you raise, um, in terms of, of, of the, the suspended DG um, advocate Sam Bukela, um, I can get a report early in the new year uh, because Minister Tembu in the presidency is overseeing the process and then report to this committee. Um, and I'm happy that the uh, portfolio committee will continue to make borders uh, a priority because our borders are very porous and some, some areas they are non-existent and that will certainly help uh, to speed up uh, the, um, the action. Um, I will make sure chairperson also that the MOOA is signed, signed immediately and, and, and once that is done, I will forward a copy to the committee. Um, the, the whole Bay Bridge, um, the, the SIU tribunal, they filed papers on the 17th of November, uh, exactly to, to freeze the accounts and to recover some of the monies. Once that process is, is, is concluded and we receive a report from the SIU, uh, we can also in, inform um, the members. So Chairperson, I've just summed up. Um, I, I, I'm going to give over to the acting DG to, to also do the same, but any other things that we've not been able to answer because of time today, Chairperson, um, we will forward to you in the writing. Thank you very much. Acting DG? No, Minister, um, it, it won't be right for the acting DG to come in. Our time was from eight to quarter to 10. Uh, okay. We are expected now to go and log in in, in, the, yeah. in preparation of the plenary sitting. But uh, we, 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 we really uh, need the written responses. Um, what, what, oh, yours was a summary, um, not exactly in detail. We really need a detailed uh, responses from the members that uh, for members that asked uh, detailed uh, questions, uh, Minister. Um, again, uh, honorable members, let me appreciate your, your time um, when we had to change the time because of if this week's parliamentary program, because we are going to have a full three hours. Now it's not even that, uh, not even two hours. It's one hour, 45 minutes, and you are here, you were here early in the morning and you, you presented your views, and we really appreciate that. It has not been an easy year, honorable members, uh, very exhaustive, uh, new normal, and all that came with it, but you were very consistent in doing your work. You were there when we were saying that we have to go to all the oversights, you were there and you were working so hard, we challenging all that was out there. And I think if, if there, were, there should be an award, this committee needed a serious award uh, for doing its work this year. Other members, I really appreciate that. Minister, we had some ins and outs um, as the portfolio committee, as it is the nature of the work that we're doing, but you were there with us. Uh, sometimes we would go to you hard on and you would come to us. But at the end of the meeting, we would all agree that we have to work together. We hope that we will carry this forward, honorable members, in 2020, 2021. Uh, Minister, I won't lie to you, we're going to deal with this department. This department, it shows the signs that it is really not a good department. Administratively, it is not doing so well. There are so many things that are not going well, even in provinces. We have raised this, the issue of the unoccupied houses that are being vandalized, where we were in 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 Kozi Bay, we were told by the the mayor there that there is land there that is lying around. They want to use it 
but it belongs to the national department. Those things have to be sorted out um, by you and, and the department. Thank you again. Thank you, honorable members, for a year that was very, I don't know how to call it. Thank you, our team A, our support staff, the parliament. No, it's, it's doing good work. Um, hoping to see you in 2021. Uh, Drive safe those that will be driving after Friday to their yeah. places, those that will be flying. All the best in your un new normal Christmas, new normal New Year, whatever. But stay safe and ensure that you don't get caught with COVID. Thank you. Uh, the meeting is adjourned, honorable members. Then please go and log in the parliamentary side. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. Thanks, Chair. Goodbye. Bye. Bye, honorable members. Take Thank care. Thank you, Chair. Stay safe. Take care. Take care, colleagues. Bye-bye. Stay safe. Stay safe.